Ever wonder what sets the winners apart from the losers? And what does it really mean to be a winner? My name is Federico and I'm a young, successful entrepreneur passionate about sports, business, mindset, and real estate. If you are just like me and you want to crack the code to victory, then Winning Wins Podcast is made for you. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to Winning Ways with Fred. My name is Federico and I am your host, guys. Today I have a winner for you guys. I'm excited for today's interview. But first and foremost, please, 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 if you do find value in the show, please share it. Uh, we will be growing the show organically. We'll not be running ads. Even when we become a top three show in the world, it'll all be organic. But without further ado, my man, Dave Robinson, how are you, man? I'm well. I'm well. Thank you for having me on. I'm excited to chat, man. For sure, man. Thank you for being on. A lot to cover in 45 minutes, so let's get started. So tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, Dave. Cool. So I am a men's health mastery coach. Uh, I've got a group called Chop Club for Men where we help executive guys get healthy while they work. Right. And so we know that that family time, business time is really important. We know there's a lot of uh, very legitimate excuses out there when it comes to, to why things can or can't occur. Uh, and we help to close that gap between what people want to do and what they actually do. What I've been doing for a long time is helping people with their stories, their stories. And what I mean by that is uh, words, breath equals stories and stories equal how we think about ourselves, how we relate to the world, our identities. Um, you know, it becomes our reality. So we dive into the stories people are telling themselves shift some language patterns, move some emotion and create a lot of space and clarity from that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I, I was, I was going through your profile, going through your reels, everything you do. And one point that, 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 that was distinct and most people don't talk about that. You were talking a lot about what's your breath, right? Can you talk a little bit about that and how your breath affects your day to day and your emotions and all that? For sure. And, and I'll give you uh, a couple examples. Uh, let's say for the next minute, I breathed like this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. I'm going to work myself up pretty quickly. Yeah, right? That sounds that. like I'm at the end of a workout. Sounds <laughs> like the beginning of a panic attack. Yeah. Right. That's a that's probably a, a familiar state for a lot of people. Maybe mm-hmm. an, an upregulated fight or flight sympathetic nervous system response state. Totally. On the other side of that is. You know, what happens if I spent a minute and breathe like this? You're relaxed. Much more calmer, much more relaxed, downshifted, right? This state is a parasympathetic nervous system state, a rest and relax state, the feed and breathe state, right? Okay. Uh, In this state, we can learn, we can process emotions, we can relate to things that have previously stressed us up and amped us up. We can relate to them in a calmer manner, right? And so um, our breath dictates, uh, I would say everything, but it wouldn't be accurate because I believe our words dictate a lot too, but our breath is a huge part of that equation. And you can, you know, uh, have positive attitude or, or use affirmations or journal or whatever. And if, if your breath is stuck high up in the chest or it's, it's in and out through the mouth or it's uh, too frequent, right. Yeah. Those are all going to be things that are going to prevent us from stepping into uh, that calm centered place that we're really, I imagine a lot of us are seeking. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think one point that bothers me a bit is, unless you yourself or somebody that's into this stuff, then you research and you learn about the breath. Uh, you learn about meditation, which includes the, the breath. Um, and I, I started researching this and I, I learned, uh, I found Wim Hof method, started doing that, started priming with Tony Robbins, power walking, working with my breath and started noticing a big difference, but it's not taught, right? And it's so crucial. Now, why do you think that is? Why, why do you think it's not taught? And why, why is it that, that people like yourself, coaches, and people trying to make others better emphasize this so much? I, I think it's not taught because we, one, we, a lot of people assume we just innately know how to do it. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. right? Like, yeah. um, 
you know, like we should know how to sit up and down out of a chair. You know, that's a squat, yeah. right? And we know there's good form and bad form to a squat. We, we should innately know how to run. And in yeah. fact, if you look at children and watch their movement patterns, uh, when little kids run, like pre school age children run, it's almost always perfect just mm-hmm. perfect form. Right. But then when we start sitting all day, every day, we start, uh, uh engaging in, in activities that, that change our movement patterns and change what we're naturally physiologically designed to do. Yeah. And I think that occurs with breath as well. So people wrongly assume that we innately know how to breathe because we're doing it all the, all the time. You're always breathing, yeah. right? Any listener, you're breathing all day long, right? Yeah. You're also thinking all day long. You're also moving and hey, maybe there are optimal movement patterns. Maybe there's optimal thought patterns. Maybe there's optimal breath patterns, right? And these are things that I really like to highlight with people. Yeah. Yeah, man. So much to dive into here because I love this subject, personal development, how to get better and how to get you into your peak state and be optimal, right? And breathing is one of them. But another big one of them is the story you, so the story you tell yourself and your mindset, right? Because your mindset is dictated by that story that's holding you back or moving you forward. So let's touch on that a bit. Um, what's what's what do you do with your with your team that helps people get take away that story that's 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 preventing them from reaching their goals? Totally. Well, I, I think it starts with the self-talk. And I think yeah. it starts with, you know on a good day, that's fine. Cool. Maybe we can, we can speak well to ourselves, but what happens on the bad day or what happens when adversity hits or what happens when, you know, those, those old patterns or those old stories start popping up, you know, we start looking at the evidence of why we can't do something as opposed to why we can do something. Yeah. And in most circumstances, we, and our stories are the ones that are holding us back. It's not anybody else. You know, yet that victim mentality is very pervasive in society these days. Um, You know, so what we do is we start by highlighting the victim mentality, which is, I'll I'll define it for you because it's so important. Uh, It's an an acquired personality trait whereby a person tends to regard himself or herself as the victim of the negative actions of others, even in the absence of clear evidence. Now, the the victim mentality depends on habitual thought process and attribution. So we focus on the victim mentality. We highlight the victim mentality in, in, in our own thinking patterns or in that client's thinking patterns. And then we go into on our worst days, like what is, what's your inner critic saying? What's your, what's that part of you saying? What's that bully saying? Yeah. And not only becoming aware of it, but for the first time for most people writing it down verbatim, like, How do you shit talk yourself? Mm -hmm. Let's get that on paper and let's then start to feel that, feel where those things come from, feel what that does to us physiologically, like physically in our bodies, identify where it came from. So now we can start to dig down into some even deeper stories and then start to change the narrative. Okay. And and it's hugely powerful. Yeah. You know, and I was going to touch on that because what if, right, you go and you dive in. But a lot of the time, you don't know, at least it happened to me. I know it happens to a lot of people, too. You don't know what the story or why the story came upon. Like that story that's holding you back. Why? Mm-hmm. Why? And like digging deep into your childhood, how you were raised, and then finding that reason and then saying, okay, that's why. That's not true. That could have been handled differently. But a lot of the times, because I'm talking about personal experience, recently, up to like two years ago, I, I ended up like, fully grasping one of my limiting beliefs and why I had it. And it brought me back to when I was like seven years old. So walk us through that. What if somebody doesn't fully know why, what's their, what's their limiting belief? Well, they do know that, but where it came from, because I assume that you need to know where it came from to squash that. I think to squash it. Yes. You really identifying that one of the earlier times or one of the most charged, emotionally charged times that relates to that particular subject or, or thing or experience is, is really important. I also believe that, that the best affirmations or intentions or mantras or, or whatever you want to call them come from a, a come from a limiting belief, right? Yeah. Period. You know? Yeah. Um, so 
in a, in a previous world of mine, uh, I was a financial planner for seven years. Um, I used to be a strength and conditioning coach at a, at a D1 oh. school. I did that for a year out, out of college. Uh, I've been in, in coaching uh, health and wellness and habits for the past five, six years full time. And uh, in between all that, I, I had a period of time where I was in a long long distance and long-term relationship. Uh, I wasn't feeling great in my career doing the financial planning stuff. Uh, I was burning myself out, burning the candle at both ends, grinding, hustling, et cetera, et cetera. Right. And my running narrative at the time was I hate myself. I, and it wasn't all the time. Right. But on my worst days, like, I hate myself, man. I hate this life. Like, I hate what I'm doing. Like, I hate this. This sucks, right? Uh, and yet I was continuing to be in the relationship. I was continuing to be in the career. I was continuing to, you know, work my tail off and, and not take care of myself. And, you know, ultimately, the first big major step towards that personal transformation was getting out into like using fitness and getting outside and going on, on trail runs and seeking personal development in the form of audiobooks or, or, you know, a podcast or whatever. And I found a book by Kamal Ravikant called love yourself. Like your life depends on it. And I swapped, I hate myself for, I love myself. And I started to repeat that. And that became, while I didn't believe it out the gate, I soon through evidence and through repetition, uh, became, that became my anchor statement. I started to believe it. I started to act that way. Okay. If I love myself, I would do this. If I love myself, I wouldn't do that, you know? Uh, and that became my fallback. Right. And so eventually I was able to dive into those actual stories of why I felt that way about myself of, eventually. And that was like the, the dark night of the soul, the deep shadow. And, you know, if we're talking Joseph Campbell's hero's journey, like that's the inmost cave. That was my, yeah. my inner, inner soul. Right. Yeah. You know, but using this work, I was able to have that identified, highlighted and had the courage and the set and setting to dive into that space. Right. And not only rewrite, but face that narrative, face that big boss, you know, and that helped to like finalize that, that narrative shift and that identity shift. And, and I think that's, what's so crucial about this is, you know, we can rely on affirmations, especially if they come from limiting beliefs and we're able to, to translate that shift, that and feel what that power, you know, something used to hold us back. is not propelling us forward because, yeah. you know, we don't need that thing that we let go of. Right. But then also, I mean, frankly, having a coach is vital to being able to shine a light in on that, you know, that spot. And, your coach doesn't have to be someone that you're working one-on-one with. You could use like a, a David Goggins type figure as a coach or a, you know, Cam Haynes as a coach or a Tony Robbins as a coach. They could be this virtual figure, but somebody that, that is uh, experienced enough or that you could relate to enough. I call them expanders that, mm-hmm. that can help you expand your own mind and your own world and, and kind of use that as coaching from a distance yeah. until the time's right. Yeah. But you know, it's 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 so, so so much to break up there, right? But one of the points that 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 uh, that ha- that that stands out is you almost have to trick yourself at first, at right? Beginning, yeah. Like in, in, in your case, right? You, you're telling yourself, I hate, I hate, I hate myself, I hate myself, I hate myself. You switch it to I love myself. At first, you probably didn't believe it. And you felt kind of weird saying, "You're probably like, why am I even saying this?" But as you went on, and you probably tied more emotion to it, started believing and starting finding the reasons. As to why you love your life, instead of seeing the the gaps, you're now seeing the gains, like the book. And yeah, that's very important part to, to to becoming the best version of yourself. So so let's go back here. Breath, very important. Learning how to breathe, to control your your state. Then the story, learning how to turn that story from negative to positive using affirmations. What other ways would somebody be able to turn that story around from negative to positive? So we use a process called the lifted method. Uh, I call it story work. And it is, it's, if a story can be titled or written down, then we can use this method and release a ton of uh, those old stored emotions and and the uh, type stuff from it. Right. Um, (laughs) So if you're, this isn't 
the this is not this method. And if you're open to this, uh, I'd love to play a language game with you. It's called the the should detox. Okay. The should detox. Okay. And this is going to do a great job of highlighting the power of words, uh, and it's going to make it you know relatively personal. You can play on whatever level level you want to play at, right? But right. Um, what is something for you that you might have said to yourself today, maybe this week, this month? Something along the lines of, oh, I should do this or I shouldn't do that. I should have should have spent more quality time with my family and loved ones. Boom. That's a great example. Do you happen to have, uh, we'll see if I happen to have one. Do you happen to have a magic wand nearby, a pen or pencil nearby? Yeah. Right. You got something to write down on? Yeah. Cool. So write down that statement. One that feels good. I should spend more time with my family. Let's do that. And loved ones. I should. And if you're listening at home or wherever you are, if you're driving, don't do this. If you're not driving, pull out a pen and paper and write down a should statement for yourself. You can play along. If you're driving, pause this and come back to it when you (laughs) park your car. (laughs) Exactly. All right. I've done it. Cool. If you would read out that should statement. It says I should have spent more time with my loved ones and family. Cool. How's that feel? How's that feel to read out loud? What do you notice? What do I notice? I notice maybe some, some sort of, I wouldn't say maybe like a, a bit of regret for not doing it. Cause it's, it's something that that means a lot to me and I didn't separate the time to do it. Okay, where do you feel that regret? Like, what does that feel like physically to you? If you if you could describe regret without using, you it know, like oh, what makes knot. you feel sad? Okay, it, keep it, going. It's like a knot in my stomach. Typically, when I get some sort of, uh, when I feel this way, like a bit of anxiety, right? I, yeah. It's more, it's like a knot in, my, in the top of my stomach. One to 10, 10's high, one's low. Where Right now, I'd say like a six, seven. Okay. Have you felt that before? that knot, is there a time or a place that you've like really felt that knot or that feeling of regret yes. as related to your family? Yes. Yes. Does it take you back to a specific memory or a swath of time or, or what? I would say it takes me back to a couple of different times. Not, not a specific one. If there's a uh, one that was particularly challenging, right? You don't need to say anything about it. You don't need to give any details, but sure. title it. Right. Title it, you know, like I'll give you the title of mine. It won't give anything away. It's top of the steps. Okay. That's the title of something that means something has some charge to me. Right. So what's the title here? So this is a title to a a, a specific situation that comes into mind. Correct. Um, And it has to be a title. Let me think. Not doing it right. Not doing it right. Cool. So now three years from now, you're the number three podcast in the world. And I can come to you and at at an after party and say, hey, man, you remember that story? Not doing it right. And you're going to go, boom, you go back to a specific moment in time. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cool. Mm -hmm. So if this were we're we're sidetracked now off the should detox. But if this were story work, if we were coaching, you would take the next five to 10 minutes and write that story out conversationally. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like take, take, I wasn't there. You were there. Tell me what happened. Right. And you would yeah. write that out on a Google doc or on a piece of paper. And then we would four step or story work that story, which we'll come back to. Right. Yeah. But as part of the should detox, we've established that, okay, saying that, ah, man, I should have spent more time with my family and loved ones gives you the feeling today of like, a not in the, in the sternum, a little bit of ugh, that, like yeah. regret, yeah. a little bit of pressure, a little bit of, uh, you know, it maybe takes you back in memory to other times you might have, should have spent more time with your family, that particular story. So just saying that out loud, that those words have power, right? Yeah. Cool. Now, all I want you to do is I want you to cross out the word should and write the word could. And if you're listening at home, cross out the word should in your should statement and write down the word could above it or below it. I spend more time with my loved ones and family. I could spend more time with my, my family and loved ones. How's that feel? A lot better. In what way? I don't have the anxiety. 
it's so crazy though to think man that it's just like just a little word right and saying it creates so many so many different feelings right but yeah I, I don't feel the anxiety i feel like i feel like i'm looking forward to it rather than regretting not doing it bingo so thank you for that observation and 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 with this work especially there's no right or wrong answers right because it's it's feelings like you could have said hey that makes me feel worse and it would have been like totally cool you know we're just we're going based on feel right but for you to have that feel better um this is very common right it's because should have need to have to you know those are are what we're calling uh dramatics or pressure language yeah. Right. Like, I don't like it when my boss tries to tell me what to do or if my parents try to tell me what to do or the military tries to tell me what to do or the government tries to tell me what to do. Like, I don't like it when I try to tell me what to do, man. <laughs> and, and I'm like, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. Right. So so that that's the power of pressure language of these yeah. dramatic languages. Right. So if we can shift a word and frankly, we're shifting two letters replacing an sh and putting a c right yeah. that's the power of words so now let's try this one out replace the could and write can i can spend more time with my loved ones and family i can i like that how's that feel a lot better a lot better because now it's now it's now it's not like i my my intentions are to do it it's more like i will do it i can i might you know and, and, and that would be another progression, right? I'll, I'll tell you a, uh, a quick story. There was a, a guy by the name of Robert Cialdini, I think is how we pronounce his name, wrote Influence, Power of Influence. And uh, he ran this experiment. This thing was back in like the 80s. Think about like a, a Manhattan office, peak copy machine time, like fax machine time, you know? Yeah. Uh, uh, the experiment was they had people go from the back of the line to the front of the line and ask, the person in the very front of the line, cut in front of them and say, excuse me, can I cut in front of you to make some copies? Like 66% of the time, roughly two out of every, two out of every three times, they got a, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, here, go ahead. Mm -hmm. right? Yes, they got a yes. So when they ran it again, back of the line, front of the line, uh, excuse me, can I cut in front of you to make some copies uh, because I'm late for a meeting or because my boss really needs it or because uh, whatever, right? They got a yes 94% of the time. Right. And so that because that why, right, that greatly increases the odds of that yes occurring, of that desired outcome occurring. Right. So yeah. add a because statement to the end of this statement for you. So I can spend more time with my family because. Because they are uh, a, they are a priority in my life. They're the most important thing in my life. Cool. Write that down. Yeah, because they are the most important part of my life. Cool. So uh, we'll do this in kind of a, a, a mini, mini structured way, right? So we've done the the should detox, uh, write family, like kind of go down on a new piece of paper or kind of a cleaner spot of paper, and write family or write priorities, one of the two. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Write down your, your full can because statement so i can spend more time with my family and loved ones because it's a priority in my life or whatever that exact statement is for you so now what we're doing y'all is is we have titled a little mini story here something that's important right and personal right and top of mind Right. This is a, a, a should statement from earlier in, in the day or week or month or whatever, relatively recently. And now we've got a little mini story as it relates to spending time with the family. And remember, we've already got that side story from, hey, this what was one of the first times you felt that or experienced this or, or a very emotional time as it relates to this particular event. So yeah. what we're going to do now is I'm going to show an example of, of the four steps. So read out your title and read out your one statement. So it's the title is family, and it says I can spend more time with my family because they are the most important part of my life. Awesome, and we've established that, that feels good to read, right? Feels great. Awesome. This time, I want you to slow it down by about sixty percent speed. 
Takes right? it. or to about 60% speed rather. So it's not a robot, but you're going to really slow it down. Okay. Okay. All right. I can spend more time with my family because it's the most important part in my life. Does that feel any different to slow down? Do you think about anything differently? Yeah. Yeah. You know, as you slow it down, you, you, you process it a little more and you process the words, right. Then being the most important part of my life, which creates more feeling. Yes. Rad. Awesome. Awesome. Where that because statement is all right before the because i'm going to have you insert a breath okay okay right so i want you to make a little mark right breathe before the because and then do another one make a little mark and write breathe at the very end of the of the sentence at the period okay at the very end of the of the, of the sentence okay. of the whole thing yeah and so now we're going to incorporate this breath. I'm going to have you read it slow, just like you did. That was a perfect pace. And when you see breathe, I want you to have a big volume breath in. You're breathing into that diaphragm. All right. You're okay. breathing right underneath your stirrup. Okay. Right. Uh, sorry. I lost my video here. Hey, it's a coaching call. I love it. It's coaching call. Yeah. Here we are. Here we are. All right. So we're breathing into the sternum. Feel that volume in through your nose and length out through your mouth. Okay. Volume in through your nose, length out through your mouth when you see the word breathe. So say the sentence and do, then do then breathe when 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 I say the words breathe. Bingo. Okay. Nice and slow. I can I can spend more time with my family. Big breath, exhale. Because they are the most important part of my life. Big breath, exhale. All right. What does adding the breath do? It's, it centers me a little more, right? Which, again, makes you process the sentence a little better. And it creates more feelings, more emotions. A lot of times people are doing their best to avoid those feelings and emotions. You know, people are doing their best to distract from, mm -hmm. to disassociate from, to think about, to avoid um, whatever it may be. Right. We, we don't like feeling sad. We certainly don't like sitting in this. We certainly don't like, you know, feeling that regret. Right. So I imagine most of the time when there's a, ah, oh, man, I should spend more time with my family, you just, just like every most people, you just shove that thought down in a way and you keep doing what you're doing. You don't typically then go on and spend more time with your family, right? Yeah. Maybe, you, maybe you might make a call, which is great, you know, but what coaching can do is start to identify that, whoa, this is, this is a priority. Yeah. I want to make this a priority. I am it's a priority. You know, we take this now and pull out your, your calendar. When are you going to go spend time with your family? Yeah, you know, like they've got the gallery going a little in and out right now. Try this. Is this better? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Perfect. What 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 I would do if we were coaching is I'd have you pull out your calendar yeah. and I'd have you schedule time with your family. Okay. It's like cool. So this is a, this is what this is something that's meaningful. This is a, a, a priority. So something that you said you can do, could do, will do, can because, and let's schedule it. Put it in the calendar. Totally. Yeah. I will do that for this Wednesday now.
<laughs> you know, it's funny because prior to our call, I had some, it was something like each week, each Sunday, I plan my week out, and there's little the the book I use, the planner I use is called Epic Life Planner, which I recommend to anybody listening. It's great. And each Sunday, it's it's there's a Sunday success system, and it, it it makes you highlight what areas you want to focus on this week, right? Or each each week. And for me, I, I knew I I didn't spend the the time I wanted to with my family, so that's something I highlighted. But doing these exercises is definitely um, you know hammers it down. But I want to touch on that, right? Because you said those are feelings we have, but sometimes we avoid them. Right. Why is that? Why would you say sometimes it's feelings we all have? And in, in this case, it's feelings that are positive. They're not negative by any means. They're love. Um, yeah, it's family. It's connection. You know, why would someone not want to feel that? Well, when it when we started that, that was that came from I should hang out with my family more that that. Created a sense of regret because it was something that that you maybe weren't doing enough or weren't doing at all or weren't doing, there was a story associated to the, oh, I should be doing more of this. Thus, yeah. you know, what does that say about you, right? Uh, that is an example of, you know, like we said, pressure language, dramatic language. There's lots of other categories of language and of words that, what, that build and create conflict. Right. Yeah. So think about um, the word, you know, what we call negations. So things like isn't, can't, not, shouldn't, won't, you know, anything with an N apostrophe T is a negation. And that's putting emphasis on what we don't want. You know, so uh, I don't want to get wet. What, what I'm really saying is I want to stay dry. Yeah. Most people don't see the rain and say, oh, I want to stay dry. They see the rain and go, oh, I don't want to get wet. <laughs> You know, yeah. so it's, a, it's a tick of the English language that that puts us in these places of of focusing on what we don't want. Right. So when we notice that we can start to shift the language patterns when we notice when we use projections, when we're talking about they, he, she, uh, they are always late. You know, I can't believe what they did to me. You know, uh, there's a lot of of drama in that. There's a lot of conflict in that. And so when we can start to identify those patterns for ourselves, that can open up the possibility of changing the story. So all of those words have emotions. Yeah. We've all talked ourselves into a bad mood. Everyone has. Everyone has. Everyone has. Oh my God. I feel like most people have a degree in that. Yeah. A hundred percent. That that's what we would call the bully talking. Yeah, right? yeah. That's, that's our inner critic or our, our, you know, the one who has all the evidence of why we, are in that bad mood to begin with, right? Yeah. Oh, you suck, this sucks, right? Well, some of us have talked us out of those bad moods into good moods, may happen less frequently or less often, but, but the words are different. And so those words carry power, our breathing patterns carry power, those old stories carry power. And when we realize that, we can start to quite literally change the story, change the narrative, change the, the ways that, we're using language both internally and externally when we speak and when we think yeah. we can start to be more uh, uh, intentional with those words and have them architect or build the reality, the, the reality that we want. Yeah. Yeah, man, this is, it, it truly is gold guys, especially this exercise. I would recommend doing it. The one I just went through because I wasn't here just playing around, playing along to, to play along with them. You actually get this feeling when you switch the words around that you should try it out right now. Just say oh, something that you mean like this and change the words around and see how you feel. It's, it's, it's powerful. And it's so simple, right? Yeah. Most people don't do it or we just don't learn how to do it. And it comes down to, to where we started our, our conversation with, for example, breathing. They don't, we don't, we don't learn this in school or most of our parents, um, don't teach us this. I mean, some do, right? But not everyone. And it's so critical for your success, life, happiness, fulfillment, and all of that. So, uh, Ben, thank you so much for, for coming to the show and explaining all this to us. I learned a lot. I felt like it was a coaching lesson. I feel like I owe you money, man, because it was a one-on-one. <laughs> but it's definitely someone that's 
Um, guys, someone that I, I, I plan on having back on the show because we need to have a part two to dive deep into, dive deeper into this. So, so you guys could learn about this more. Dave, thank you again, man. Where can they find you on social media? What's your website? Thanks. Uh, I really appreciate it, man. I, I'm on Instagram pretty actively at DaveRobinson.coach. And then you can find my story work coaching online at www.workyourstories.com workyourstories.com. Awesome. Yeah, guys, and share the show. People need uh, to learn about Dave. As you can tell, he has a, a gift of, of explaining this and a third grader could understand this. And that's that's something that that's hard to come by because a lot of these gurus, uh, self-improvement online, uh, Instagram influencers go out there and charge you $10,000 for a session and they're going to teach you this, but in a more complicated form. Well, you could just go into Dave's Instagram and learn from him for free or listen to these types of podcasts. So definitely share the show so everybody could learn about Dave. Dave, again, thank you so much for being on the show and looking forward to having you back, man. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Much love to you guys. Yeah, man. Have a good one. Ever wonder what sets the winners apart from the losers? And what does it really mean to be a winner? My name is Federico, and I'm a young, successful entrepreneur, passionate about sports, business, mindset, and real estate. If you are just like me and you want to crack the code to victory, then Winning Wins Podcast is made for you. 